Hi, and welcome back to this week's episode of Science with Dr. CK and continuing my series, High on Health. Today, we're going to talk all about vitamins. Vitamins are vital. And the reason that I decided to do this episode is really because of everything that's going on right now and the global health and economic crisis that we're facing. And so what can we do to give our bodies nutrition that we may not be getting that can help to boost our immune system with this global pandemic that we have? So let's begin. What are vitamins? Well, a vitamin is a nutrient that our body needs in small quantities in order to function and stay healthy. And so sources of vitamins come from plant and animal food products that we get and we can also get them in dietary supplements. You know, over 20 years ago, I decided to work on a PhD in chemistry and looked at selenium supplement tablets and found that the amount that was sold in the supplements over the counter wasn't what was actually put on the bottles, okay? And so some vitamins are actually made in our human body that once we get the natural food product in, then our body can convert that to the essential vitamin that we need, okay? So let's take a look, because not all vitamin supplements are considered equal also. So we have whole food vitamins versus synthetic vitamins. Now, research has been shown that our bodies absorb whole food vitamins better than isolate or synthetic vitamins because in our gastrointestinal tract, they're closer to the foods that we would naturally get those vitamins from. And in some cases, certain vitamins have to be combined with other minerals in order for our body to really fully absorb those. So when we get supplements from whole foods, that takes all of that into consideration and our body, it's as if it's getting the natural food supplement. All right, so we have different classifications for our vitamins that we find in the human body. We're gonna take a deeper look into these here, water soluble and fat soluble ones, okay? So what is the difference between our fat soluble versus our water soluble vitamins? Fat soluble vitamins, they can dissolve in fats and oils and these vitamins then actually can be stored if we have excess amounts of it in our fatty tissue. Water soluble vitamins, on the other hand, well, they can dissolve in water, but just like they dissolve in water, these vitamins, if we have too much of it, our body will excrete it in our urine. So our fat soluble vitamins include vitamins A, D, E, and K. And our water soluble vitamins include the B complex vitamins and also vitamin C. And so as I mentioned earlier today, we're gonna to focus on vitamin C. So this is the chemical structure of vitamin C right here. And vitamin C, the chemical name of it, is actually ascorbic acid. And it is a water soluble nutrient that's found in some foods. Now, you, lately there's been a huge hype. Um, aside from going to the store and not being able to get toilet paper or paper towels, one of the other things people are stocking up on are any healthy nutrients that they think that could help their body to either prevent them from getting this coronavirus disease or maybe help their immune system so that if they do get it, then their bodies will have a better chance of recovering quicker. Well, the reason why people are concerned about vitamin C and why vitamin C is flying off the shelves is because it's an antioxidant. Now, what exactly is an antioxidant? An antioxidant is something that protects our cells from the damage caused by free radicals. Okay, so now I just threw out another term in there. What is a free radical? Well, for those of you that don't know, free radicals are actually formed when our body converts the food that we eat into energy, all right? And free radicals are formed from chemical reactions. They're actually unstable atoms or molecules that just free radicals, they can go and they're attracted because of the charges on them. They're attracted to other compounds. 
And so we're actually, our bodies are actually exposed to free radicals every day in, our, in the natural environment. We get it from the ultraviolet light from sun. We also can get it from air pollution. And if you're exposed to cigarette smoke, even secondhand smoke. Another thing that vitamin C does is it's used to make collagen. And this is important. It's an important, collagen is an important protein that's required for our wounds to heal. So it helps in the healing process in our body. All right. Well, vitamin C also will improve the absorption of iron from plant-based foods. And it's essential in helping our immune system work and properly to protect us from disease. Again, one of the reasons why vitamin C is flying off the shelves at stores, right? Well, you know, an ironic thing, or I don't know, I consider it to be ironic, is that most animals are able to synthesize vitamin C in their bodies. However, humans are not. So therefore, it is essential that we get vitamin C in our diet, whether through our food or through supplements that our bodies will actually absorb. Now, depending upon your stage in life or conditions that you may have, the amount of daily recommended vitamin C that you should take varies. And so you can see that from, you know, children birth to seven to 12 months, anywhere between 40 to 50 milligrams of vitamin C. As we get older though, you can see that the vitamin C that we need then increases, okay? And if you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding, depending upon if you're a teen or over 18, the amount of vitamin C that you need definitely increases more than when we're younger. So what foods can we consume that would give us vitamin C? Well, one of the... Let me tell you, I've never had an issue with vitamin C because I love citrus. And so when it comes to our citrus fruits, oranges and grapefruits and their juices, lots of vitamin C. I'm gonna show you guys a table that shows the amount of vitamin C in comparison with different foods. Now I will say this though, um, one of the things when I was younger, I never, would really drink water or milk. All I drank was orange juice, just loved it. And so you do have to be careful with how much acid, the orange juice does have citric acid. So even though you're getting vitamin C, you do have to watch how much acid you intake uh, for the enamel on your teeth, especially if you're a growing child, and then also for your stomach. Other good sources of vitamin C include red and green peppers, uh, kiwi fruit, Broccoli, strawberries, cantaloupe, baked potatoes, and tomatoes, all of those contain vitamin C. Well, you may not realize this, but the vitamin C content of the food can also be affected. It can be reduced if you store those foods for a long period of time and also with cooking. You know, a lot of people don't realize that when you cook foods, you can destroy naturally the composition of the nutrients and the minerals in those foods. And so that's why one of the reasons why steaming or microwaving is recommended to lessen the amount that you lose, but depending upon the nutrient, some nutrients, if you heat them up, the chemical composition of that nutrient changes. So it's really best, especially if you're looking at increasing your daily vitamin C, to eat fruits and vegetables in their raw forms. Well, are you getting enough vitamin C? You might wonder. Well, fortunately for us, most people in the United States do get enough vitamin C from foods and beverages. Now, groups of people that need to be concerned as to whether or not they're getting enough vitamin C are people that smoke and also those that are exposed to secondhand smoke infants that are fed evaporated or boiled cow's milk, people who don't eat a very wide variety of food, okay? Again, the better variety of food that you eat, the better chance that you have that you're going to get all of your necessary nutrients that, you, that your body needs to function normally. And also people with certain medical conditions. So 
severe malabsorption. So people that are not able to absorb foods very well, um, people with cancer and also people with kidney disease. Now, what happens if you have a deficiency of vitamin C? So a deficiency of vitamin C is considered to be people that get below about 10 milligrams per day. And there's actually a disease that's associated with this that people can develop if they are deficient in vitamin C. It's called scurvy. And some of the signs and symptoms of scurvy, scurvy, you can get fatigue, you can have inflammation of the gums, small red or purple spots on the skin, like you can see in this picture right here, all right? Um, people with scurvy also would have issues with joint pain. They have poor wound healing. Again, remember vitamin C is important in the production of collagen, and collagen is really what helps our wounds heal. Um, they can also have corkscrew hairs. Additional signs that people can have from vitamin C deficiency, depression, swollen, bleeding gums. They can actually have their teeth be loose or they can actually lose their teeth and they can develop anemia. And unfortunately, scurvy can be fatal if it's not treated, if it's gone untreated. Now, just like a deficiency, what about if I have too much vitamin C? All right, so if you have too much vitamin C, this can cause you to have diarrhea, nausea, and stomach cramps. And people with hemochromatosis can, vitamin C can worsen their iron overload. So this is basically having too much iron and it can worsen their iron overload and it can then damage their body tissues. So some of the limits that have been established for vitamin C that people should definitely pay attention to, um, you know, if you take too much vitamin C in a day or so, you probably will not have very harmful effects, but chronic exposure to too much vitamin C can then really damage your body. You know, I always tell people that moderation is key. Too much of something or too little of something is not good for you. You've got to have things in moderation. So what are our limits for vitamin C that we should be intaking? Um, actually for children up to a year old, there hasn't been an upper limit established. That doesn't mean that it's unlimited guys. It just means that there's no upper limit that's been documented yet. Um, one to three years old, children shouldn't intake more than 400 milligrams per day. And adults really should not intake more than 2,000 milligrams per day. So let's take a look at some of, food, some of our foods that contain vitamin C, all right? So we have things like red peppers, sweet red peppers, orange juice, grapefruit juice, um, Brussels sprouts, tomato juice, cauliflower, spinach, frozen peas, Okay, I'm gonna give you guys some resources at the end that you can look and go and look up and see if some of your foods actually, how much vitamin C they contain. So these are the references for this. Um, I hope that you guys have gotten something out of today's episode and that you join me again next week as we continue my weekly series, H2O, High on Health with Science with Dr. CK. Thank you, stay healthy, and feel free to subscribe and click on the notifications button so that you'll know as I continue to post new episodes. Thank you so much.